Hold on, Oklahoma. We're in for severe weather overnight and possible snow tomorrow. And gas prices surge. Find out how it's impacting Oklahomans. Plus, NATO nations say there's no sign Russia's pulling back from Ukraine's borders. We'll have the latest. This is OU Nightly. Hello and thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Colby Terrell. And I'm Jesse Klinger. Tonight we begin with severe weather coverage as portions of Oklahoma are in a red flag warning for fire danger. But we could also see some icy conditions tonight. Michaela Smith joins us live in studio. Michaela, what's going on out there? Oklahoma really doesn't know what season it wants to be in. We're definitely looking at a red flag warning right now out to the western portion of it. That's going to expire at 6 p.m. tonight, and that's due to the fact that it's been extremely dry lately, and then we can see these winds have also been gusting out of the south today. We did bring a little bit of moisture back into the atmosphere from the Gulf, but those temperatures out there have just been 77 Elk City. That's well, below, uh, well above what we see for normal for this time of year. So definitely with those conditions, we're going to be fueling some fire danger, but that's also what we're going to be talking about for some severe weather potential tomorrow. We're under a slight risk here in Oklahoma City and Norman out there to the west as well. And that's going to be overnight tonight, so you definitely need to be taking your precautions before you go to sleep. And then after that moves through, we're talking winter weather. So severe weather, winter weather, all within a couple hours. So we're going to see areas in the pink, that's a winter storm warning that's in effect, and then areas in the purple, a winter weather advisory. So we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on that and then talking severe weather chances, who sees snow, and then your clear weekend ahead. I have it all in Maine weather. Thanks, Michaela. A chance for severe weather tonight has Norman residents looking for a way to cover their car. OU, Nightly, OU Nightly's Reese Wetzel spoke with a local dealership just to see how their, their business will be impacted. The threat of hail is one that Norman residents do not take lightly. It's been almost a year since the devastating hailstorm that demolished the west side of Norman. The pickup shop off Flood Street is one of the businesses that saw damage to vehicles. Um. We lost our inventory completely. We've had several customers lose their cars as well to a total loss from the hailstorm. Tonight's storms come with a chance of hail. That's enough to cause panic amongst Norman residents. Make it very serious. Inconvenient yourself just for the night. Park your car somewhere safe. Uh, don't be impacted negatively by the, the hailstorm. Even if it doesn't happen, at least you took the precautions that you should to protect your car. Anytime you say hail, it's likely that the parking garages on campus will quickly become full. Previous hailstorms left zero space with cars taking up almost every inch. The repair for hail damage is a long process. But you're only going to be able to do what you can do if it takes five days to fix one of these. So basically one every week in a whole year, I'm not going to do 52 of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the whole year if I worked on 365 days out of the year. Even if the risk is low, it is always best to make sure your car is protected. Reese Wetzel, OU Nightly. Residents are advised to reach out to families and friends who can supply car coverage. As for students wanting to shelter their cars in the parking garages, get there early. And like Jesse said, one of those drivers thinking of stashing your car in a parking garage in case it hails, you might want to think again. OU Parking and Transportation says it's not a good idea to pack the garages. We asked today, and we're told it's okay to park in the spot, but if there are no spots available, drivers need to leave. If you do find a spot in a university garage, you have to move your car by 7 a.m. the next morning, or you'll receive a ticket. As active cases continue to decline, the State Health Department reports over 1,000 new cases of COVID-19 today. Nearly 15,000 active cases have been reported, and over 14,000 Oklahomans have died since the start of the pandemic. A Russian invasion of Ukraine could cause economic, economic turmoil for America. Romello Woodfork has that story and the rest of today's headlines from around the world. Thank you, Colby. Fear of a Russian invasion is rising, which could hurt American gas prices. Increasing tensions on the Ukraine and Russian border has pushed President Biden to warn Russia of economic sanctions if Ukraine is invaded. Russia is an energy superpower and is second only to the United States. The Russian government could weaponize their oil reserves, cutting America off, which would hurt American drivers at the pump. Looks like Prince Andrew will not see his day in court. The prince 
The Prince of Virginia Gouffre have reached an out-of-court settlement for an undisclosed figure after she accused the royal, the royal of sexual abuse. He has maintained that he has no memory of meeting Gouffre or being photographed with her. This settlement has many wondering how the prince will foot the bill, leading many to speculate that the queen will contribute, which would be detrimental to the queen's public face. A former Amazon employee is facing 10 months in federal prison for plans of conspiracy. The employee was sentenced Friday after pleading guilty. According to the Department of Justice, this was one of six indicted for fraud. The group is accused of bribing Amazon employees to gain an advantage in Amazon's marketplace. Dozens are injured after a bar collapse in London. Three received potential severe injuries and 10 more had minor ones. Colby and Jesse, Colby and Jesse, back to you. Thanks, Romello. Coming up in Earth Report, sea levels are continuing to rise. We'll tell you what effects we may see in the near future. Plus, find out which popular campus corner restaurant is making a comeback when we return. Sea levels are rising faster than ever before, and U.S. officials are starting to notice just how rapid that change is. Zaria Oates has this story and more in Earth Report. Yeah, Jesse, Colby, sea levels have been a topic of conversation for quite some time now, but a report done by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is showing a possibility of 10 to 12 additional inches of sea level by 2050. In these next 30 years alone, the sea level is expected to rise the same amount it did over the past 100 years. And while we may not have noticed its effects in the past, they're sure to shine through in the coming years with frequent coastal flooding. And as flooding increasingly becomes a major problem in the U.S., places like Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, are already seeing heavy effects of climate change. Heavy rain and flooding came with landslides, resulting in more than 40 deaths so far. The Civil Defense of Rio says this afternoon brought in more rain than the historically average amount the state typically sees in all of February. The municipality has announced it's in a state of public calamity. And our friends over in the west in Pasadena, California, saw some crazy weather too, but ended up making the most out of it. The Hanlon snowstorm landed Tuesday night right on top of the Rose Bowl Stadium where earlier this year Utah and Ohio State faced off in their bowl game. Residents ran outside their Southern California homes and quickly took advantage of the snowfall, making snowmen, having hailball fights, and even just witnessing the rare sight. While it was a brief storm, it is a part of the abrupt weather spanning across southern parts of the U.S. Now we're expecting some severe storms here too, so Colby, Jesse, make sure you're checking the weather and getting everything you need before the freezing rain and hail move toward us here in Oklahoma. Thanks, Zaria. A popular restaurant that was set to close down is making its return. When you're out rounding the bases on Campus Corner, a spot that many enjoy is Diamond Dogs. The local hot dog joint, known for their variety of food and beverage options, was set to close down due to the pandemic. Now, under new owner Travis Case, he looks to bring back stability while expanding the business so Norman doesn't lose its iconic spot. No, 100%. I mean, obviously, it's, it's a staple on the corner. Yeah. Like, everyone's been to Diamond Dogs. Everyone's had a Margarita Helmet. Everyone's had a Wonder Boy. Everyone's had a Coney late at night. Like... It's been a staple across the board, whether it's on game days, nightlife, or just for lunch. With the grand reopening this Thursday from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., Diamond Dogs is partnering with OU Barstool, where they'll be giving away gift cards, merchandise, and maybe some free food. And gas prices in the United States continue to increase. And while this is not uncommon recently, find out how it's affecting Oklahoma drivers. Plus, Michaela gives us a look at tonight's severe weather. Yeah, while you're sleeping tonight doesn't mean Oklahoma's weather will be. I'll tell you how you can prepare coming up. Welcome back to OU Nightly. You can see those clouds have moved out of our area. So while it's a beautiful day, it's definitely not something we want to see ahead of the severe weather potential we're going to have tonight. Now we're sitting 67. Those winds are gusty from the south though, 30. So and those dew points are going up as well. Now current temperatures across the metro, we can see 73 in Oklahoma City, 72 here in Norman. Just a bit warmer out to the west, 75 in Fort Cobb. But you can see that dry line that is coming through that's going to be what's making our severe weather later on. That's part of our setup. See 16 in Elk City, that's our current dew point. So it's very clear 
right here. It's out there and it's moving to the east. So we're going to be continuing to track that as it moves through. And you can see that cold front as well. It's stalled right around Woodward right now, but Guyman areas, it's already dropped 22 degrees from where we were yesterday. So that cold front is coming. And that's what's going to fuel our potential for some severe weather overnight tonight. So we're in that slight risk. It's a two out of five risk. So we're expecting just a little bit of things that we can see here across the area. First off is going to be hail. So we're in that 10% risk for hail. So definitely make sure that you're aware before you go to bed tonight that you have a plan that your car is in place. You can put a towel blanket on it maybe just to make sure that it's safe before you go to bed. And that tornado threat as well, it does exist. We're sitting just on the edge of that 5% risk here in Norman. So while the tornado threat is low, it is not zero. And especially when storms form a line, sometimes we have brief spin up tornadoes. And so that is a possibility as well. So if we look at these severe threats, again, that tornado threat is low, but it is not zero. Hail is what we're looking at. Could see quarter to golf ball size hail within these storms as they move across to the east. But really high winds, especially as these storms form a line as they move off to the east. That's when we get some pretty strong straight line winds. And then here in Norman, we know we see some flooding quite quickly. So in those low lying areas and areas that are prone to flooding, we could see some quick rain. So that definitely has a possibility of some flash flooding. So we look at this radar forecast. This is going to be close to midnight tonight. So could see some scattered showers here. But that main threat is still going to be out there to the west. But by 3 a.m., 3.15 tomorrow morning, that's when we're going to start to see that line getting through here. And then it's going to push off out to the east. And the behind it, we have some snow. Now, this model doesn't exactly bring the snow all the way down to Norman. But Oklahoma City could see some flurries. And we could still see some flurries expected here in Norman as well. So be prepared for that as you go throughout the day. And here's that winter weather that we're looking at. A winter weather War, uh, winter storm warning, excuse me, that's in the areas in pink, and that's until 6 p.m. tomorrow. And then a winter weather advisory is right here near Oklahoma City in Norman. So definitely a possibility of seeing some snow tomorrow morning as well. Those totals we're going to see, though, around 9 a.m., 10% chance, 30% as we go throughout the afternoon, and it kind of dwindles back down again. And those snow totals really just a trace amount if we see anything here in Norman. But where that winter storm warning is, they could see upwards of four inches of snow. So roads and definitely will become an issue with this as it moves through. And then once it moves through as well, those wind chills tomorrow morning is what we're really worried about as well. 23 around 10 a.m. So we had a beautiful day today, but you're definitely going to want to have your winter coat still and bundle up in the morning as you head out to class because it's going to be very, very chilly. And then that's going to kind of continue throughout the day. But turning cold, a few flurries. The sunshine will return on Friday. And then we're going to have plenty of sunshine for Saturday and Sunday back into those 70s by Monday before another cold front moves through later next week. Colby. Thanks, Michaela. Everywhere you look, things are costing more money. And if you're hoping the pain of the pump will end anytime soon, OU Knightley's Audrey Goodson says you might be out of luck. If you filled up lately, you know that gas prices are on the rise. This time last year, a gallon of unleaded gas in Oklahoma cost an average of $2.26. A month ago, that average was $2.94. And today, that average has risen to $3.15. AAA's Leslie Gamble says high oil prices could be the culprit. I think that we will continue to see this high level of gas prices and predictions are that it will go even higher. Up to possibly over $100 a barrel. And that doesn't sit well with the folks that we talked to. Well, I'm not a fan of it. I still have to drive my car everywhere, so I, and I work in Oklahoma City as well, so whenever they're high, it's uh, not very fun. The markets are concerned that if Russia goes through with invading the Ukraine and the U.S. retaliates, Russia's reaction will be to withhold uh, its oil. The last time gas prices were this high in Oklahoma was in 2008, where the state got close to $4 a gallon. Gamble predicts high prices at the pump will continue through the summer. Reporting from Norman, Audrey Goodson, OU Nightly. If you are wondering where you can find the cheapest gas in your area, Gas Buddy says on Q has the most affordable gas in the metro. And OU Athletics has some extraordinary coaches, Jesse. And Abby Bennett is here to tell us which one is up for an award. Abby? That is correct, Jesse and Colby. You'll have to stay tuned to find out. Plus, Women's Hoops will be back at Lloyd Noble tonight to host the Red Raiders. I will tell you all the details when we return.
Welcome back. I'm Abby Bennett and it's time to talk sports. So let's dive right in. Last night, men's hoops fell in overtime to the ranked number 20 Longhorns. Elijah Harkless tallied 19 points while Jordan Goldwire added 18 for the Crimson and Cream. In overtime, the Sooners missed just one shot, but they had two turnovers, which took away the scoring opportunities. Head coach Porter Moser believes they still have a shot at redemption going forward. This, this, this team is not dead. This team is, is, is playing its best basketball right now. And um, we got to shoot it better. I mean, we were five for, we were five for 23, you know, we got to shoot it better. We got to play smarter. Um, but th th this, th having this team fight and, uh, and getting ready to play is not the issue. And on the women's side of the court, Coach Baranchek was added to the watch list for the Women's Coach of the Year. In her first year in Oklahoma, she has led one of the best turnarounds in women's college basketball. Baranchek was also named the ESPN Women's National Coach of the Week earlier this year and took the unranked team at the start of the season all the way to number 15. And the ranked Sooners will be in action tonight at the LNC as they face the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The women are looking to bounce back following their loss against the Longhorns. The Sooners won the matchup versus the Red Raiders the last time they met in Lubbock. Tip-off is set for 6 p.m. And softball phenom Jordan Ball and Tiare Jennings combined and swept the first Big 12 weekly awards of the season. In Ball's opening weekend performance, she claimed the Big 12 Pitcher of the Week after tallying 24 strikeouts in 12 innings. Ball is grabbing attention in the softball world, but also from her head coach. I saw a pitcher who was in complete control at all times, uh, fired up had some tough counts, got herself out of it. I thought she was outstanding. And I don't think I've ever seen a freshman, at least in our program, have that kind of poise and that kind of stuff to shut down a very elite and very good UCLA hitting team. And get excited, Sooner Nation, because OU Baseball will take the mound this Friday to start off their 2022 season. The Sooners ended last season falling in the Big 12 tournament against Texas, but are looking forward to opening their season this weekend as they take on Auburn, Arizona, and Michigan down at Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas. And after Josh Giddy became the first teenager in NBA history to record a triple-double against the Knicks, the Thunder will be back at the Paycom Center tonight. OKC will take on the Spurs and have won nine of its last 12 home games against San Antonio. Leading scorer Shai Gilgis Alexander is sidelined with an ankle injury, but will be reevaluated after the All-Star break. Tonight's tip-off is at 7 p.m. And last night, South Carolina upset the Ole Miss Rebels by a buzzer beater. James Reese missed his first five three-pointers but took the risk in the final moments of the match to prove himself. Reese's heave from the half-court line found the net after hitting the backboard to lift the Gamecocks to victory 77-74. to And Colby and Jesse, I don't know about y'all, but nothing beats a good old buzzer beater. Um Honestly, more of a football fan, but I got to say, nothing does beat a buzzer beater in basketball. Yeah, no, they're a little stressful, but do you know what helps with stress? Cute and cuddly animals. And now the Oklahoma City Zoo will help some individuals who deserve a break to do just that when we return. I'm Cameron Joyner at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Today, President Joe Biden rejected a request by former President Donald Trump in regards to the Capitol attack on January 6, 2021. Trump requested the White House visitor log from that day be shielded from the committee conducting the investigation. But Biden says this is not in the best interest of the United States. Colby, Jesse, back to you. Oklahoma City Zoo is offering a new promotion to give back to our frontline heroes. From now through March, all healthcare workers and first responders will get free admission to the zoo. Families will also receive discounted admission so they can enjoy a day off with their loved ones. You can visit the zoo during its new hours every day from 9 to 5 and even see the zoo's new baby elephant born last month. Now, Michaela, do you have any last minute tips on how we can prepare for tonight's weather? 
Yeah, so the weather's going to happen overnight tonight, so make sure that your phone is plugged in, that your volume is on, and if you have a weather radio, make sure that it's for your specific county so that if alert was to be made, that it would wake you up and you would hear it. But after that moves through, we are going to see some snow possibilities tomorrow in the morning, and it's going to be a little colder, and then we are going to start to warm back up into Saturday and Sunday. We're going to see that plenty of sunshine, and then that next chance of seeing some possible rain and even a cold front is going to be by next week, but just be weather aware this evening and make sure that you are ready for the system to come through tonight because it's going to be while you're sleeping. So just like I said, have your phone plugged in and then make sure that your volume's on because your phone will alert you if you're in a warning of some kind. Thanks, Michaela, and thank you for watching OU Nightly. Make sure to tune in every weekday live at 430. Follow us on Twitter for updates about tonight's severe weather. Have a good night.